lying on her back, Diane, unable to move, pondered who might come to her rescue. Living miles away from town, her desperate cries were unheard. Was this to be her end? Would she die in solitude? Then, a sound at the door caught her attention. A scratching followed by an entrance. In the small Alaskan village where Diane resided. She was known as the butcher's wife. Married to the esteemed town butcher, Jeff. His sudden demise was a shock to the tight-knit community. Despite his age, Jeff's unexpected passing brought everyone of significance in the village to his funeral. The community mourned the loss of this well-loved figure. Leaving his grieving widow, Diane, in a state of profound sorrow. Following Jeff's death, Diane, overwhelmed by grief, found herself devoid of energy. Her days were spent lying at home, only mustering enough strength to attend to basic needs. She withdrew from social gatherings, friends, and any human interaction. Grief had consumed her, and her desolation seemed insurmountable. The community noticed Diane's self-imposed isolation, observing her confinement to the essentials and her unresponsiveness to greetings. They understood the depth of her sadness, concerned but unsure how to help. They recognized that simply sleeping through her days was not a healthy way to cope with loss. After days of quiet discussions about Diane, a compassionate villager decided it was time to take action. His name was Samuel, a sportsman who engaged in game hunting. In the past, he had a business relationship with Jeff often selling his game to the town butcher. This connection led to a cordial relationship between Samuel and Diane. Samuel recalled overhearing Diane express her desire to hunt, a passion hindered by her age and lack of time. This memory sparked an idea in Samuel's mind to help Diane fulfill her long-standing wish after some effort. Samuel succeeded in persuading the grief-stricken Diane to accompany him on a hunting trip. Understanding her penchant for hunting, he suggested that it could be a remedy for her sorrow. Though risky, Diane eventually agreed, realizing it might be the perfect opportunity to embrace something she had always wanted to do. Donning her late husband's jacket, old work boots, and taking his polished shotgun, Diane joined Samuel on the expedition. Despite her age, she proved to be remarkably agile, easily keeping pace with Samuel. Approximately 20 minutes into their hike, they heard a sudden loud growl. Samuel, surprised by the unexpected noise, instructed Diane to stay behind as he cautiously investigated. To their astonishment, they discovered a distressing scene. A mother wolf had sacrificed her life to protect her four vulnerable cubs from a bear. The cubs, no more than three weeks old, were left orphaned and desperately trying to elicit a response from their deceased mother. Diane, moved by their plight, immediately dropped her gun and rushed to cradle the helpless cubs. Realizing that without their mother, their chances of survival in the wild were slim. Faced with the dilemma of what to do with the wolf cubs, Samuel found himself in a predicament. Taking them home wasn't an option due to his dogs, and leaving them in the wild seemed perilous. In this moment of uncertainty, Diane stepped forward with a solution. She volunteered to take the cubs home assuring Samuel that she would care for them until they were old enough to fend for themselves. Although risky, Samuel observed the immediate connection between Diane and the cubs and realized he couldn't separate them. Reluctantly, Samuel agreed, setting a condition that Diane must promise to care for the cubs and release them into the wild when the time was right, Diane happily accepted. And over the next few weeks, she dedicated herself to the well-being of the cubs. She fed them. 
provided scraps of meat from her husband's freezer, and ensured their safety. The companionship of the wolf cubs brought a renewed sense of happiness and purpose to Diane's life alleviating the loneliness that had consumed her. Samuel, checking on the cubs every other week, was pleased to see their health and good behavior. However, after about six months, it became apparent to the villagers that the cubs were not dogs but wolves. Concerned, they approached Diane, urging her to release the cubs into the wild. Diane, protective and attached, assured them that the cubs would leave when the time was right. And until then, she would safeguard them. After ten months, Samuel returned, indicating that it was time for the cubs to embrace their wild nature. With a heavy heart but filled with love, Diane took the cubs back to where she found them and set them free. In the following days, the cubs disappeared from Diane's sight, leaving her feeling exceptionally lonely without their comforting presence. Feeling purposeless and experiencing a decline in health, Diane's well-being deteriorated rapidly after releasing the wolf cubs. Within weeks, she became a mere shadow of her former self. And within three months, she was so unwell that even the simplest tasks, like grocery shopping, drained all her energy. A tragic accident occurred one day as she fell down the stairs, breaking her hip. Unable to stand and writhing in pain, Diane resigned herself to what seemed like an inevitable fate. After around ten hours of suffering alone, Diane heard scratching at her door. Surprised but grateful for potential assistance, she unlocked the door, expecting a person to enter. To her astonishment, four huge wolves strolled into her living room, the same cubs she had cared for and released. Rushing to her side, they nuzzled her, showing immediate concern for her well-being. Realizing Diane's helplessness, the wolves went outside and began howling loudly. After about 30 minutes of persistent howling, a truck pulled over. Samuel, the driver, had heard the distinctive cries and had rushed to Diane's aid. Tearfully, she explained her situation, emphasizing that the wolves, her beloved cubs, had come back to help her. Without their howling, she believed she would not have survived. Samuel, understanding the gravity of the situation, acknowledged that Diane had saved the four cubs, and now they had repaid the favor in a remarkable way. The wolves had played a crucial role in alerting Samuel to Diane's distress, ensuring he arrived in time to save her. This heartwarming story reflects themes of love, friendship, and the extraordinary ways in which kindness can be repaid. Feel free to share your thoughts on this story in the comments. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more compelling content. Jimbo is one of 11 bears living at the couple's non-profit Orphan Wildlife Center. One of them, Frankie, was born in the wild and arrived here in 2012 after being hit by a car. The rest of the bears were born in captivity. Jimbo, from a farm on the west coast, had a broken leg. There are plenty of wildlife rehabilitation centers and other centers that care for bears. But Qualsic has drawn attention for its hands-on approach. An online video of him playing with Jimbo has more than 16 million views. Qualsic describes it as natural as petting your dog. He said the bears were like his children and they never hurt him. The couple have been working together to help rehabilitate squirrels, ducks, deer, mink and other animals since the early 1990s. The main goal is to release animals. But the bears here cannot be released because they are injured. Or they are too used to captivity. The bear is of ancestry to 57-year-old Susan Qualsic. Her father, Albert Ricks 
was a well-known circus veteran from Germany who raised Syrian round bears. A troop of African lions and world-renowned lion whisperer Kevin Richardson have become the unexpected stars of Mercedes-Benz' glossy ad campaign. A majestic animal climbs onto the hood of a Mercedes SUV in a stunning set of photos. And in the playful set of pictures. Another two wrestle with Mr. Richardson at a game reserve in Pretoria, South Africa. But the images captured by photographer Adrian Stern have a serious message they are used to raise awareness of the plight of animals in Africa. Kevin says on his website that the lion's range has decreased by 90% over the past 100 years. Scientists predict that by 2050 there will be no wild lions in the wild. Given these shocking statistics, Kevin knew wild lion populations needed our help. That's why he started the Kevin Richardson Foundation. Unfortunately, many people around the globe insist on owning exotic pets. Instead of treating these creatures as free wild animals, these owners treat them as regular pets, often with disastrous results. However, an exotic pet owner in Brazil has drawn some controversy for owning wild animals. While he thought there was nothing wrong with that it was what the man had these dangerous creatures doing around his family that really pissed people off. It is widely believed that tigers are dangerous animals that should not be underestimated. They are predators after all. And even if they don't attack humans specifically, they can easily tear people to pieces. Eris is a resident of Brazil and he is a tiger super fan. It all started in 2005 when he rescued two tigers from a circus where they were said to have been horribly mistreated. Many circuses have a controversial history with their treatment of animals. So in many ways Eris did save their lives. Over the years, he rescued more tigers and eventually made room for seven of them on his land. However, this is only part of the story, although Eris built a large enclosure for tigers in the backyard of his home. He soon began allowing the huge and dangerous big cats into his house and around his family despite the dangers. Eris' three daughters never panicked. And they were used to living with tigers from the first day their father welcomed. These exotic pets. In fact. Despite what some say is negligent and risky. Eris believes the tiger will get along well with the whole family. I never worried about my daughter coexisting with these animals, Eris said. For him. Maintaining a good relationship with tigers. Like any other animal. Comes down to one simple principle. You must show respect and love to animals. Indeed. Not only did the family keep tigers at home like other people have cats and dogs. But they didn't seem to show any fear. That's not to say his family didn't take huge risks every day. Tigers are not domesticated. So they are difficult to predict even for those who trust them. While most experts and nearly everyone with common sense agree that this lifestyle is terribly unwise. The family has so far managed to ignore most of the criticism. The tale. Which has been passed down through generations in North America began in a small village in northern New Mexico in the late 1800s. Farmers found themselves in trouble after wolves began attacking livestock that grazed the plains and mountains near the village. The wolf pack consisted of only two adults and three pups. When the wolf was badly wounded, his mother appeared to have died among the pack of wolves that tried to harm him. And he was found by the woman who was traveling in the forest when he was only three months old. And she raised and took care of him. Grandfather Raymond lives alone in the village after the death of his wife Elena. His children left and they married and never visited him again. Grandpa has only one black dog. Shupa, who is a loyal and good friend. One day. Grandpa and the dog went to the forest to pick mushrooms as usual. But found a little wolf on the way. Grandpa is surprised that the wolf didn't escape. But realizes that the wolf was only born and has obviously lost its mother. 
Raymond loved animals so much that he decided to take the poor animal home and care for it until it became an adult wolf. When he came home, he found that the little wolf was very hungry and hadn't eaten for a long time. Grandpa gave food to the wolf and built a small house next to the dog house. He calls it Sam. After six months, the wolf had grown, which led Raymond to return him to the forest. The wolf disappeared and did not reappear for seven months. In the fall, Grandpa went out into the yard and saw Sam lying in front of his house. He hugged it, but was surprised when he noticed that he had brought a basket covered with a white blanket. Grandpa opened the basket and he was surprised to find a newborn baby inside. The little one is very nice and quiet. Grandpa brought the little boy home. He bought him some milk. And spent most of his time tending to the poor child the grandfather thought of his grandchildren who hadn't come to see him for ten years and wished they would come to see him so he could enjoy his time with them. Over time. Raymond feels guilty as he realizes that the boy's heartbroken mother may have been looking for him. He wanted to contact his mother. But as he got used to the little boy, he couldn't leave him. He spends most of his day with his children. Grandpa was considering adopting the little boy, but realized he wouldn't be allowed to adopt a little boy that age. Especially since he was an old man. Grandpa is annoyed at what he has done. He left the little boy at home. He was up all night with guilt and considered taking the little one to call the police when he woke up in the morning. Grandpa got up early in the morning to go to the police station. In the kitchen, he heard a knock on the door. When Raymond opened the door, he found a very beautiful young woman. When he looked into her eyes, she thought of his wife. Grandpa has been carefully watching the young woman, who is exhausted with a bag in her hand. He finally recognized her as his granddaughter Martha, daughter of his eldest son whom he hasn't seen in ten years. He hugged his granddaughter emotionally and invited her inside. Grandfather had last seen Martha when she was eleven years old. And she was a grown girl now. While the grandfather was talking to his granddaughter and asking her about his son and other family members. Maxie cried, the grandfather hurriedly comforted him. And then went back to continue talking to his granddaughter. Martha asked her grandfather about the crying baby. And he told her the story. The young woman was very worried and asked her grandfather to allow her to meet the little boy that it turned out that Martha was visiting her grandfather Raymond. And she fell asleep on the way. When she woke up, she found that her son was missing, she spent two whole days looking for him in the neighboring village. When she loses hope of finding him, she decides to visit her grandfather before heading back to town. But she was surprised when she found her son with her grandpa. Two days later, my grandfather died of a sudden heart attack. The sad wolf is gone. But a few months later. He came back. Martha has settled here. And he decided to keep guarding them.